Hi, now we are going to discuss about life cycle hooks in Angular 2. When I say life cycle, that means you get an idea like there is something which we will discuss like how it will be created, how it will be ended and what are all the processes which will be in between. And when I'm talking that particular thing in Angular means we are going to talk about the components because as I said in the very beginning that Angular is all about components and everything will be built up of components itself. So here we will discuss about the life cycle hooks provided by Angular 2 using which we can make changes in the different life events of the uh, components of Angular. So every component has a life cycle which is managed by Angular. All right, so as I said, every component means maybe there could be multiple components, there could be nested components. So if there is a component, it would be having a life cycle and that will be managed by Angular 2. And what it will do in that particular life cycle, it will be created, will be rendered, will create and render its children. All right, in case if there are nesting, uh, check whether there is any data binding thing is there or not. And before destroy, before uh, removing it from the DOM, it will be destroyed so that the memory will be released. As I said, from the beginning till the end and throughout the process, each and everything will be there for in the life cycle of an event. But when I talk about the hooks, that means if a developer wants to do some specific operation on a particular event of the uh, service or any particular component, it can write a code, logical code to perform any particular operation in a much better way. So Angular offers lifecycle hook that provides visibility into the key life moments and the ability to act when they occur. All right, as I said, that we will be having a flexibility to make some operations in those particular events. So here, as you can see, there are eight events, eight, eight major events are there. All right. So obviously the first thing that will get executed will be the constructor of the particular uh, component. And right after that, you can see the different things. As during the implementation of services, you saw like on the ng on init method, we call the service in order to read the data rather than calling it from the constructor. So ng on init is actually what? It is the uh, life cycle hook for that component, right? So similarly, ng on init, we have few more uh, events which can be created as a method also when we want to make some logical operation there. So let's start a practical implementation where we will use two or three most frequently used events and we'll try to do some operations in that. So let's start the practical now. So as we discussed about the events which are taking place during the component lifecycle hooks, here we have defined a few of them. As here you can see, right here after the importing component, I have included another import in which I am using on init, on destroy, after content in init and after view in it. Alright, and in the same way, I have implemented all the interfaces right here in my class. So as I am going to implement these interfaces, I will have to define the relevant methods. And right here, I have all the relevant methods or of the interfaces which we have already defined. Now, what we'll do here, we will just execute this. It is very simple, straightforward uh, sample component, all right? Uh, in the view, I haven't put anything because I'm actually not focusing on the, that particular part, but I'm actually focusing on the events, all right? And the sequence of these events execution. So what we'll do, we'll just execute and we will check in which particular order these events or these methods are getting invoked and what about this destroy method so let's come to the browser as you can see i have refreshed it and here you can see in the console as you can see i am putting all the messages in console itself so in the console you can see first of all the constructor is executed as i said in the description first thing will be executed that is constructor after that it will be depending on the methods and obviously we have seen the sequence of the method execution so here right after that it is on init so it will initialize and it will be called 
So as here you can see, I have already done in the services, we have read the data from an external JSON file. So such things can be done here. Similarly, after that, you can see first our content will be initialized and then the view means the content will be ready by the time view will be initialized. So here you can see after content in it and after view in it. But after that, you cannot see any message that is on destroy. So what you can do, you can put the same code in one of your single page application where you have put the routing concepts. So out there, as soon as you will jump from one component to another, you will get the on destroy method invoked. So at that particular time, whatever task you want to do on the destroy method of a component, you can put it right there. But obviously for now, my component is not destroyed. So I'm not going to get this message. And for now, I don't have any other component in this application to execute. So that's why I am not able to see on destroy message in the console. But obviously now you have an idea like how you can put these lifecycle hooks in the action. You just need to import that in the beginning. Then you will have to implement all the interfaces, whichever is required. And then you will have the respective methods, which will be prefixed by ng and you can define and those will be invoked automatically on the particular event.